Hello and welcome to a Spark AR guide overview. In this short series, we're going to be explaining some of the values and what they mean and go into a bit more depth on what this terminology means within Spark AR Studio. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the various types of shaders and just what the difference are, is are between them. So all I've done is I've just downloaded this blue diamond model from the uh, Sketchfab library via add asset library and I search for diamond. And then I just simply attach it to my face track object. So if I go to the material that's assigned to this, which is the diamond outside uh, material, you'll notice that the shader type is set to physically based. Now, what physically based shader type means is it means we can adjust its metallic values, its roughness. Uh, we can use environmental HDR images to actually adjust the lighting and reflection of that object. Um, and a few other cool things, essentially. So uh, as you can sort of see here with this diamond uh, object applied, I could adjust its certain metallicness so I could make it less metallic and make it more um, opaque, essentially less reflective or I could give it a little bit of reflection. Uh, I could adjust its roughness. So that is sort of how sharp the texture is going to appear. So if we have our roughness to zero, it's a little bit blurred. But if we uh, go all the way up to 100, it's very blurred, as you can sort of see here. So we can adjust that on our scale to just how rough that texture will be and how sharp it will be outputted essentially to ourselves. Um, we can st obviously still adjust the material, so it could still apply a texture, so I could still apply the default blue, but you can still see this sort of reflection going on from the HDR eye image. So the um, HDR eye image is essentially a image taken in a 360 degree sphere of a space which we use for our lighting values. And this is quite commonly used for color grading. Uh, we use it for VR work. Uh, it's used in a number of ways, but it's quite often use useful for uh, adjusting the color values and adding shine and reflection where otherwise it may have been lost. Uh, so that is uh, in its principle what HR is and what a physically based material will allow you to do. We can also turn on things like emission. So I could apply um, an emissive surface and color so as you can see I could apply a emissive light so it looks like it's now glowing and illuminating so this is how you can create that um, neon look um, obviously by uh, sort of adjusting the values of the color and the material you apply you can adjust how that vivid that can be uh, we may also want to have a glow on the outside so we would actually create a kind of diffused material on the edges that's sort of gaussy and blurred out uh, and we may look at that in a future video. So with the environment turned on, uh, you can see Reddit on, it's just the default sort of material we have here. Uh, let's just turn off that texture, so like so. Um, but as soon as you turn our environment on, this basically uses our HDRI image that we can use now as a reflector uh, within our 3D model material. And I can always rotate that uh, HDRI image around the surface to adjust how that is reflected on this diamond object, for example. Uh, now that's basically uh, physically based shaders within Spark AI in its most core basic level. Uh, let's look at the next one. So uh, of a shader type that we've used quite commonly has been the flat shader type. And you would have seen that in a lot of my other videos. And what this does is it basically ignores lighting within the scene and gives it just a flat color or texture and overlay. So if we was to just have my um, sort of base color diamond, for example, you can see how it's still kept the transparency because the material texture is semi-transparent, uh, but it's lost any kind of 3D depth because it's basically a flat color. No lights are giving shadows, there's no detail there, um, but flat images are very good for target tracking if you just want a poster that doesn't want to become too system heavy by having the lights calculated in real time too much. Uh, so flat shader types we tend to use more for UI um, than we would for 3D models, to be honest with you. Um, another type is the default standard. So this uh, does take into account the uh, directional and ambient lights in our scene. So if I was to adjust my ambient light, for example, you can see how its uh, light levels are adjusted to it. Likewise with the directional light. And obviously we could adjust these and edit these in our patch editor. Let's go back to material here. Uh, again, you can see we've got options for specular. 
So we can, if we had a specular texture that was uh, for certain areas of this material, uh, give that a uh, specular look. Uh, let's just see what happens if we apply a uh, metallic one. So specular gives this kind of bit of detail. You can see there's a bit of a shine going on there. Um, you know, just a smoothness, so that basically if I have the smoothness all the way up to 100, it kind of becomes very, it becomes less reflective essentially, um, for lack of a better word, so less of a shine. Uh, if I go up to zero, it has a lot more shine and a lot more of the pink texture, for example, is appearing. Uh, our normal map would be where we can add sort of surface scattering, so if it was a brick wall, for example, we could have the um, depth added by having our normal map texture to create the illusion of 3D depth on a flat surface. Um, it's probably not going to work with this diamond because again there's no normal map for this that has any kind of lumps or bumps for example, but there we go. Uh, emission again works very similar to emission uh, in the other shader type. So again we can add this glow to our object. We can have this kind of cool, illuminous effect but it's not going to be quite as pronounced as our physically based um, effect. Uh, we have our alpha so let's just turn our emission off and default our base material to something a bit more obvious. So we have our alpha texture so this would be what is shown or not shown so if we had elements on our texture that was um, black they wouldn't appear or if there's transparent it wouldn't appear uh, if there was white, they would appear. Uh, that's where we would set our uh, alpha texture to be. And I might have an example of an alpha texture on this machine. Let's just have a quick scout. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Don't think I can find one super fast. Um, da -da 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 -da. Do we have an alpha test? Let's just try this. This might work. There go. It's not a good example, but you can sort of see how the alpha material has been applied and it's basically cutting out and showing what parts we do and don't want to appear on our material. Um, so even with 3D models, you can still uh, adjust what is shown on that 3D model by using our alpha texture to show what is there and not there, essentially. And the last two are face paint. So face paint would typically be used for um, makeup or anything that goes on the facial area, hence the name face paint. Uh, as you can see, we have some options for opacity, uh, background influence, so how much of the background controls um, whether that material is adhered or not, essentially, and brightness, where we can, again, obviously adjust the brightness levels of that material. Uh, you don't have a lot of options for face paint because, again, it's for facial painting, um, but as you can see, it's quite good if used to do a face mesh texture. And finally, our last shader type is our blended shader type. And as the name suggests, this is largely used for blending a material or colour together, largely in a patch editor. Uh, so your options are somewhat limited because of that. Um, but yeah, the blended shader type is built for blending materials together and using mixing patches to combine one material and one colour with another. Um, and it acts somewhat similar to standard and flat, but has the option of um, added uh, prefab bl uh, blending between two values or more uh, essentially uh, and again we may go through that more in future videos so you can sort of see how we've got blending options for like adding uh, multiplying from the scene and normal you can also call uh, certain areas and just opacity um, but again uh, we won't be we don't tend to use blended that often or at least I don't um, but I just wanted to sort of show you uh, the shader types and how uh, the different shader types are within the program can be used for very different purposes. Uh, I hope this kind of helps explain shader types in a bit more detail and if you have any queries uh, obviously uh, comment in the comments down below and I hope to see you again soon and remember to like and subscribe if you want to support the work that I do. Thank you for watching.